Just want to remind everybody to mute your phones, please. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to our August the 11th, 2020 uh, Madison County Fiscal Court meeting. Uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the Madison County Fiscal Court will be video conferencing the Fiscal Court meeting live on Madison County, Kentucky's Facebook page and, and also on our local Spectrum TV channel 377 in compliance with the Office of the Attorney General's opinion 20-05. At this time, I'd like to call this meeting to order. Clerk Barger, if you will, please call the roll. Master Combs. Master Barger. Master Tudor. Here. Master Bakken. Present. Ms. Taylor. Here. Uh, at this time, I'm going to invite our Master Tom Bakken to lead us in a word of prayer. Could we pray, please? Dear most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for another beautiful day, dear Lord, and we just thank you for this rain that we so desperately needed and our farmers to uh, help with their crops and and dear Lord, we just appreciate you looking out for us. I want to just, uh, dear Lord, just thank you again for uh, for watching out for our law enforcement officers and our first responders. They have a tough job to do and we appreciate you just sending your guardian angels to keep them safe and out of harm's way. And Father, I ask today that you would just give us the wisdom and the knowledge to uh, make decisions to move our county forward as we conduct our business. And uh, dear Heavenly Father, I just ask also that you would be with our soldiers and sailors and airmen, Marines all around the world that give us the opportunity to meet in a free country. So thank you for all of our the things you do for us. Forgive us where we fail you. And these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Tom. Sheriff, if you will, lead us in the pledge. If you would please stand, face your flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. Uh, everybody's had a chance to look over our minutes uh, from our July the 28th, 2020 uh, fiscal court meeting. Uh, at this time, I need a motion and a second to approve. Uh, John Tudor. I'd like to make a motion to approve the uh, July 28th minutes. Thank you, John. Roger. Roger seconded, Kenny. Is there any discussion at this time? Uh, Tom Bakken. Judge, in the uh, in the very first paragraph, it shows that uh, Roger, Tom, John Tudor, and you were present. Larry was also present on that. Thank you, Tom. Good catch. All right, we'll make that change. A good catch. Uh, with that change being made, uh, John, I'm sure you're good with that motion. Absolutely. Yeah, with that change. And Roger, you're, you're, good the you're good with the second. All right. So we'll approve the July 28th minutes with that change. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, call the roll, please. Master Combs. Master Barger. Master Tudor. Here. Or yes. Master Bakken. Yes. Mr. Taylor. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. That's a good way to get us a laugh this morning, John. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Fisk Court members, we have some special guests on with us today. Uh, we have a, a celebration. Uh, we have uh, our director of Mass County Health Department, Nancy Crew, uh, along with uh, Kelly McBride. And I'm sorry, Kelly, uh, I do not know your title at the health department. Is it public relations? Public information officer. Public information officer. So welcome to you all. I appreciate you all being on with us. Uh, today we have a proclamation to read. Uh, I'll read that proclamation and then you all will, will have the floor to say whatever you all want to say. 
this is a Madison County Fiscal Court Proclamation, Madison County Health Department's 90th anniversary. Whereas in response to a typhoid fever outbreak in 1929 in Madison County, private citizens, physicians, civic clubs, church organizations, and local governments in, in common community interests and, and effort established the first full-time health department, which held its first official meeting on August 13th, 1930. And whereas in the 1960s, the League of Women Voters in Richmond, Berea, and Madison County, and the Madison County Board of Health supported the State Public Health Foundation plan to improve public health in Madison County. Building the 2000 or 214 clinic building on Boggs Lane in Richmond. And whereas the Mass County Health Department has demonstrated excellence in upholding the 10 essential functions of public health and has multiple nationally recognized accreditations. And whereas the clinic services have provided high quality adult health and child health services, the health access nurturing development service, also known as HANDS program the Special Supplemental Nutrition Program for Women, Infants, and Children, also known as WIC, and Harm Reduction Programs, and whereas MEPCO Home Health has provided healing hands and warm hearts in their home health services to countless individuals and families for over 45 years, making it a valued asset and resource to Madison and surrounding counties. And whereas the Environmental Department has protected our community's health and environment through environmental inspections, training, education, and preparedness activities. And whereas the community health education programs have promoted health and prevented disease, disability, and premature death through volunteer, voluntary behavior change. And whereas since 1930, the Madison County Health Department strives every day to fulfill its vision of healthy people living and working in a healthy and safe community and follow its guiding values of integrity, compassion, respect, service, customer focus, teamwork, and continuous and intentional improvement. Now, therefore, I, Reagan Taylor, Madison County Judge Executive and the Madison County Fiscal Court do hereby recognize the 90th anniversary of Madison County Health Department and do hereby proclaim August 13th, 2020 as Madison County Health Department Day. Congratulations, Madison County Health Department on reaching this milestone. Happy 90th anniversary. Congratulations, it's exciting. Thank you, Reagan. Thank you, Thank you. very Thank you. much. Thank you, Nancy. Do you all have anything you all would like to add? Just want to thank the fiscal court and the county employees who support the, the long list of things that we do in that proclamation. It pretty, it, it's a uh, very, our, our services are, again, sometimes below the radar, but at a time of COVID, as we're at now, we get a lot more publicity and a lot more recognition for things that we do day to day. And we look forward to, again, 90 more years of the same sort of accomplishments and keeping our people healthy and safe. Thank you all very much. Appreciate you all. Thank you, Nancy. I just wanted to take this opportunity to say that I've been blessed. I think we're all blessed to live in a, a county such as Madison County, Kentucky. And I've been blessed to work for Madison County Fiscal Court through EMA and CSEP. And now I'm blessed again to work with the Madison County Health Department. Um, in reviewing some of our history, um, I realized how much the community means to the health department and um, how much cooperation we all have to have, the elected officials, the civic groups, the churches, private citizens. So um, we have a lot to be uh, thankful for and proud of. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Here, here. Thank you all very much. Uh, fiscal court members, do you all have anything you all would like to add? Tom? Yeah, Judge, I just want to say that, you know, that um, the health department is, they're kind of like unsung heroes there. They, they don't get a lot of credit for things, for work that they do behind the scenes every day. And just to be honest with you, that that's the kind of things that I love. Things that just that go on and they get accomplished every day and people working hard and, and especially in tough situations like that we have today that they're faced with. And, 
and they still accomplish their mission. We certainly appreciate everyone over there at the health department. Thank you, Tom. Roger, did you have your hand up? Hit your mute button, Roger. There you go. Uh, Tom pretty much covered it. I just wanted to tell them that we appreciate everything they do and the hard work that they put in. That's all I have. Thank you, Roger. <clears throat> all right. We appreciate you all very much. Thank you for what you do. Bye-bye. Um, next on our uh, agenda, we have these. Oh, I need to back up. I'm sorry. Uh, I need to ask the court's permission to amend the agenda for resolution 2087. Um, we need to amend the agenda for 2087. This will be a physical court funding for sheriff's department de-escalation training. Uh, the sheriff sent me a request in and I uh, did not get it put on the agenda. Uh, so I need a motion second to amend the agenda. Tom? Motion to amend the agenda for um, resolution 2087, Judge. Thank you. John Tudor? I'll second that motion, Judge. Thank you, John. Any discussion? Seeing none, call the roll, please. Mr. Bakken? Yes. Mr. Barger? Yes. Mr. Tudor? Yes. Good statement. Yes. All right, we'll move on to uh, number two on the agenda. We have a second reading of Ordinance 2018. It's the Bluegrass Regional Radio Network inter Interlocal Agreement. Uh, we have our very own IT Director, Chris Israel, on here with us. Good morning, Chris. Hit your mute button, Chris. IT guy not hitting his mute button. Fired. <laughs> I'm going to turn it over to you. <laughs> Uh, this is the final reading of Ordinance 20-18, an ordinance of Madison County Fiscal Court, Scott County Fiscal Court, City of Georgetown, and the University of Kentucky to adopt an interlocal agreement for the creation of the Bluegrass Regional Radio Network and repeal Ordinance 2016. Um, if you remember from last time, we did already approve this twice, uh, but there was a change in the dividend structure, which required us to have a uh, two more readings, public readings of this. So that was the only substantial change was that we changed the uh, dividend percentage. Uh, well, let me get to that. I can't remember exactly what it was now. Let's see here. So what we did was we changed the wording to say that Scott County and Georgetown would receive a combined 8% dividend if there were any. Um, that was a change from just 4% flat. So that was the change that was there. Um, and one thing that the, kind of the group had requested is that specifically uh, list everything that the organizations are going to provide um, as part of this, and that was added in there as well. So I don't think there's a reason to read through this lengthy agreement here, but that was the substantial change was the dividend amount. And that was just a change from the previous ordinance, not the first reading to the second reading, correct, Chris? Exactly. Yes. No changes between first and second reading. Yeah. All right. Um, do I have a motion and a second? Uh, to approve ordinance 2018 uh, we did not have any uh, comments on email um, so we did advertise this according to krs john tudor judge i'd like to make a motion we approve ordinance 2018 with the updates with the dividend changes that chris has outlined for us there thank you john roger second i have a motion and a second do we have any further discussion <clears throat> All right, seeing none, call the roll, please, Clark Barger. Mr. Barger? Yes. Mr. Tudor? Yes. Mr. Bakken? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Thank you all. Next, we Thank have a second, second reading of Ordinance 2020. Uh, this is a zone change uh, for 3241, 3245, and 3249, Old Kentucky Highway 52. Uh, we do have uh, Bert Thomas, our Director of Planning and Codes, uh, on with us today. Uh, so we'll uh, listen to the uh, ordinance and then uh, we'll get into uh, reading some comments uh, and having some discussion. So, Bert. Ordinance 2020, uh, Ordinance of the Madison County Fiscal Court, Kentucky, approving the zone change of 3241, 3245, and 3249. Old Kentucky Highway 52, Richmond, Kentucky, and authorizing the amendment of the official zoning map of Madison County, Kentucky. 
I won't read the whole ordinance to y'all again. Uh, we'll remind you that it's property adjacent to the fairgrounds on Old Kentucky 52. Uh, Planning Commission did have a, a public hearing. Um, their findings of fact was that the existing zoning classification is inappropriate. And the proposed zoning classification is appropriate for the following reasons. The character and area of the property due to the residential development in the rural corridor and the size and location of this track make RC7 a non-viable use of the property and that the character of the surrounding property and this property are more suitable for residential purposes as the subject property is within the rural corridor surrounded and in close proximity to other properties for residential purposes and contains the required infrastructure for residential development. Thank you, Thank you Bert. Um, Jenny, do, do I need to get a motion in a second um, before I read the comments? I believe that's how we know normally do it, that you get the motion yeah. in a second and have the comment period. So there should, nothing should change virtually. Right. Okay, thank, thank you. Uh, at this time, do I have a motion and a second for ordinance 2020 uh, with the zone change, approving the zone change of 3241, 3245, 3249, Old Kentucky Highway 52? Uh, Tom Bakke? Motion to approve ordinance 2020, Judge. Thank you. Do I have a second? Roger? Second. All right, thank you. I have a motion and a second. Uh, I will at this time get into the comments that were made. Um, and I will read each one of these comments that we received. Uh, and I am going to read them in order that we received them in email. Um, so the first one um, was from Bobby Jones, uh, which is a resident of that area out there. Uh, it says, Dear Fiscal Court, I would like to let it be known that I strongly oppose the proposed zone change noted above on Old Kentucky Highway 52. My reasons are the same as we debated on the Moberly Road proposed change, in parentheses, Jack Van Winkle property. Number one, this land, which is adjacent to the Moberly Road property, is wet and will cause drainage problems to the area. I feel this was discussed at length at the Moberly Road proposed change that was ultimately voted down. It was noted at that time the Doves Landing development has had water issues from its inception. Number two, traffic problems could also be an issue. Again, no one has given a plan other than change to RC1. Does this mean 10 homes or 70 homes? Irvin Road already has its issue and Old Kentucky or Old Highway 52 is a small road. Number three, the Madison County Fairgrounds is located adjacent to this property and the Fair Board voiced their disapproval of the Moberly Road proposed change for numerous reasons, all of which also pertain to this property. Number four, the no vote on the Moberly Road proposed change, parentheses Van Winkle property, should serve as a precedent, a precedence that this land is not suitable for heavy residential development. My reasons could continue, but feel redundant giving this argument should have been settled with the no vote on the, pro on the Marbley Road proposed change. This land is the same and the residents it will affect are the same. Sincerely, Bobby Jones. Um, the uh, next one is from Deborah Brewer, also a resident of that area. Uh, to whom it may concern regarding the zone change for 3241, 3245, and 3249 on Old Kentucky Highway 52. The road is too narrow for high volume traffic. Land not laid out for increased volume of housing and size of lots would decrease green space and, and safe living environment. These are the reasons I am against the zone changes. Thank you, Deborah Brewer. Uh, the next one is from Stephanie Gentry, uh, to whom it may concern. I'm currently a resident of Moberly Road and have recently heard of a planned zone change for 2141, 3145, and 3249. Uh, I, I do want to make a statement here that I think that she made a typo on the 2141, and that should have been 3141, but I wanted to read it verbatim and uh, make that point. Uh, that includes building a new subdivision uh, on the property. I have several reservations. Water is a serious issue 
and I'm not sure how a developer or, or homeowner would handle moving the water. We have had to create swales in our property to direct water away from our driveway and home. We have had to install underground drains to push water away. Several of the neighbors along Mobley Road have ponds and standing water in their yards after heavy rains. Traffic already gets backed up on 52 in the morning and in the afternoon. It takes several turns through the stoplight next to the Shell Station during these times. If we were to add more cars, parentheses due to more houses, this would exa exacerbate the problem. There is no sewage available. We had to install a septic system on our property. So would every proposed home have its own septic system? I've seen pre-platted densities, density of proposed 101 lots, give or take five lots. This is a huge population density situation. How will erosion control be taken care of? What about runoff? Is there a planned retention pond for the stormwater? There is an existing creek that runs along the property. What about the animals that live in this creek? I realize the population in Madison County is growing and new houses need to be developed. I propose the property be split into many farms of at least five acres each, which allow plenty of room for homes to be built, yet gives everyone space to spread out and won't address stress to the existing infrastructure. Thank you for your consideration, Stephanie Gentry. Um, let's see, next is uh, Tyler King. I'm writing in hopes that my concerns and the concerns of my fellow neighbors in Rose Trace do not fall upon deaf ears. There are legitimate concerns surrounding the zone changes for 3241, <clears throat> 3245, and 3249. Uh, it says sold, I'm sure it's meaning old Kentucky Highway 52 and along Mobley Road. Uh, some such concerns are related to green space, traffic congestion, surrounding property values, and unwanted attention from nefarious individuals. My family moved into Rose Trace two years ago for a for a handle of reasons, a handful of reasons. Sorry, all reasons I just mentioned. We wanted more green space and land for our family to grow and expand. We wanted room for our children to be able to get outside and play and meet neighbors. Uh, but not be on top of one another. Roche Trace offers this as we almost as we almost 1.25 acres, whereas our previous neighborhood, Hidden Hills, was like the new development being proposed. Homes on 0.25 acres or less and neighbors in in top of each other. With more homes crammed into a small space due to tiny lots, we also invite an influx of traffic as well. We will have construction traffic, then followed by, but residential traffic. <clears throat> this will lead to the need for Old Kentucky 52 to be redone and widened, as well as Mobley Road. People already drive these roads too fast, and the four-way stop creates conge congestion at times. Throw in about 70 new homes with all the traffic that comes with it, and we will be seeing more frequent, frequent traffic incidents in this area. Another concern surrounding this will be the extra eyes in the area. This new development will bring in more people and more traffic and more opportunities for those who like to loot and plunder to find new and unwitting targets. This will in turn bring more attention to the already established neighborhoods around the new developments. I for one left my old subdivision to get away from frequent drive through by non-residents and car break-ins and the domestic disturbances that the lower income neighborhood brought with it. Finally, these factors discussed had an impact on my property value and property value of my neighbors when I lived in Hidden Hills. And I would assume that when introducing the same factors here, it would impact the value of my home here as well. I for one did not invest the hard earned money I've saved for this home only to have a new subdivision come in and threaten to possibly drag down the value of my investment due to the factors I am concerned about. So, <clears throat> so in summary, I am vehemently against the proposed zone changes. Thank you for your time, Tyler King. Um, next, we have uh, Zach 
Van Girdler, uh, to whom it may concern, I am writing in concern to this zone change for 3241, 3245, 3249, Old Kentucky Highway 52. This development would increase the amount of traffic in an area that is already considered a high traffic area. <coughs> this area is also known to hold water and is not good for development. Lastly, the amount of homes that are planned to be built in this section of land would make for a very densely populated neighborhood with little green space. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you, Zach Van Gerdler. Um, next, we have uh, a letter from Scott Lamb or an email from Scott Lamb. Being a resident of Rose Trace, I am not objecting to this development. I am voicing my opinion on the lot size for the development. We have enough quarter acre lot subdivisions in this area already. Having houses literally on top of each other <coughs> does not make it a nice area to live in. I know this because I used to live on Banyan Boulevard and we had absolutely no privacy. Given the fact that it will be adjacent to two subdivisions with acre lots and and right beside a nice county facility, why not make it a nicer, more spacious area to live? Let's not focus on how much money the landowner can profit by doing quarter acre lots. Let's focus on building a more spacious, more private place to live for 20 to 30 future residents. Thank you for your consideration, Thomas Lamb. Uh, the next one is from David and Miranda Moore. Fiscal Court, I'm reaching out to you in regards to the proposed zone change for 3241, 3245, and 3249 Old Kentucky Highway 52. I'm concerned changing this zone to allow single family homes on quarter acre lots will affect property value of other homes in the area. I'm also concerned with the increased traffic on an already narrow street. <coughs> there is also the issue of flooding and water issues the street already has, and if the new construction will cause more trouble and damage to already existing properties. I also don't see how having a neighborhood right beside the loud fairgrounds would be a good idea. Please take in consideration this lifelong resident of Madison County. To, to conclude, I object to the zone change. Thank you for your time, Miranda Moore. Um, next, we have a Jonathan Moore. Members of the court, I would like to address my concerns for the proposed zone change for 3241, 3245, and 3249 Old Kentucky Highway 52. I am opposed to this zone change primarily because the proposed housing development that is proposed is being formed here Recently, the court voted against the same type of zone change on Mobley Road section of this same property. If you vote in favor of this zone change for Old Kentucky 52, then there will be no reason to not vote for the same type request again for the Mobley Road section in the future. It has been said that these lots will be divided into quarter acre lots. This land out here cannot handle this many households. It will also prevent ample green space and will not give residents adequate space between homes. The roads out here are so congested and dangerous right now as it is. How will we manage all the additional highway traffic? How will the elementary school accommodate this many additional children? This zone change would allow this to happen and would be a pathway to vote on a zone change for Mobley Road again in the future. I am a new construction homeowner on 1324 Mobley Road and can attest firsthand at the struggles of new home construction on this property in this area. This soil cannot provide proper drainage of water. After many excavations, I still haven't gotten my property able to drain water properly. This is also a major crawfish infestation that creates substantial mounds all over the property. I simply feel this type of land cannot serve households less than a, one acre. This is your typical county lot size anywhere else, which you will see in the Shady Oaks and Rose Trace subdivisions across the road from this proposed zone change. I feel this area of land should be zoned the same way. Thank you for your time and service to our county. Respectfully, Jonathan and Amanda Moore. <clears throat> 
Um, next, we have Melissa Conley. I feel that adding more housing developments on Kentucky or Highway 52 will only continue to cause traffic problems on an already busy road. There are already certain times of the day that Highway 52 is bumper to bumper for miles with the BG Bluegrass Ordinance. The businesses, the new housing development and the new convenience store with gasoline pumps already being built and the bingo hall it's already congested enough without more traffic from another overcrowded subdivision. Please don't approve this zone change. Thank you, Melissa Conley. The next uh, one we have is from Gwen Howard. The purpose of this email is to express my opinion to the development by the fairgrounds for homes on a quarter acre lot. I love in, I'm sure she means to say I live in Rose Trace and attend church at Victory Tabernacle. Tab tabernacle on that road. In our neighborhood, we are required to have enough property for green space. Please reconsider and do not overpopulate that nice county road and area. The traffic would be terrible. Thank you, Gwen Howard. Um, next, we have uh, Randy and Jen Hensley. Uh, to whom it may concern, this email is to share with you my objections to the proposed zone changes for 3241, 3245, and 3249 Old Kentucky Highway 52. Why does the Mobley area need so many new subdivisions with so many houses? What could possibly be the demand for them? We have already seen at least two new subdivisions go in the past two years that have had, that have houses squatting on top of each other. <coughs> To add more would add far too much congestion, people, and traffic in parentheses. Thank you, Sheriff. <laughs> in this area, have you considered the increased traffic flow this would cause to both Mobley Road and Old Kentucky Highway 52? Have you seen that there is already increased traffic flow to both roads without? the addition of more congested subdivisions. Old Highway 52 is starting to look like the main Highway 52 in the mornings, especially when school is in session. People go this route to avoid the stoplight at the Shell Mart intersection of Moberly and Highway 52. <clears throat> they also go just as fast. Where Moberly Road and Kentucky Highway 52 intersect, there's a four-way stop. This intersection is already dangerous. On a daily basis, I witness people blow through this intersection without stopping. Trucks with trailers, motorcycles, kids on dirt bikes, cars, box trucks, you name it, they run it. Imagine how congested this four-way stop will be with the addition of increased traffic from more congested subdivisions. How do you plan to accommodate Old Kentucky 52 with the increased traffic flow considering how small this road already is? No center line, not much space. How do you plan to accommodate increased traffic flow on Old Kentucky Highway 52 with the county fair, horse shows, truck pulls, tractor pulls, trade shows? For many of these events, it has to accommodate several large trucks with trailers. When the fair comes, there is always confusion and traffic congestion. <coughs> Please reconsider the proposed zone change changes to 3241, 3245, 3249, Old Kentucky Highway 52. Please do not make even more congested subdivisions in this area where houses are squatting on top of each other simply for the financial gain of those involved. Please consider the detrimental and dangerous changes this will cause to traffic on our roads. Why is having farmland in rural areas not ex accepted anymore in government? Do we really need to turn Mobley area into an urban area? There is no need for more houses in this area. Sincerely, Jennifer Hensley. Um, next, we have Mark Smith. Uh, members of the fiscal court, as a, as, as a decades long resident on Mobley Road, we have enjoyed the rural setting afforded by living outside the city of Richmond. Historically, the fiscal court has been carefully to maintain the property values of its citizens in the county by allowing only the responsible construction of subdivisions that continue to allow 
for plenty of green space in our neck of the woods. <coughs> the rose trays and shady oaks were both built after our construction and we were not we had no objections because they were done with other homeowners in mind one acre lots and restrictions placed on those lots have helped to maintain a high quality environment for them and for all the residents in this area however the court has heard at least two proposals in the past year that would put an end to that type of responsible building our home is by far the greatest investment we have made by allowing for the building of homes on less than a half an acre, the fiscal court would abandon the principal obligation local government has to its citizens, looking out for the best interests interest of its tax paying citizens. I urge you to please carefully consider the precedent you are setting and deny the zone change for such a development. Thank you, Mark and Pam Smith. <clears throat> Um, this is from Isaac's law office uh, to the Madison County Fiscal Court. The relief requested by my client, Mr. Ronnie Smith, has unanimously approved by the Madison County Planning Commission after a hearing held on July 21st, 2020. Notice of the hearing was made in accordance with statute and, a hearing, and the hearing was open to the public. During the hearing, evidence was presented and the commission made the following findings. That character of the surrounding area made the, pre the present zoning unsuitable and the, propo the proposed zoning classification appropriate. Information was presented that tended to show that much of the property is close proximity to this subject track is zoned RC1 and that the usage of the property surrounding this track was almost universally either single family residential or for small businesses that supported such residential usage that neither this track nor tracks nearby were large enough to be used as agricultural uses and that the property <clears throat> was within the rural development corridor with supporting infrastructure that made R1C the most appropriate zoning classification for the property. The summary of the evidence is factually accurate. The subject area is no longer engaged in agriculture. In fact, no property along the relevant portion of Old Kentucky Highway is engaged in agriculture. The corridor along US 25 is identified by the comprehensive plan to be the focus of considerable development and is identified as an area appropriate to be more extensively developed in a mixture of commercial and residential uses. The site is literally less than 250 feet from an R1 zone, which consists of approximately 278 acres of single residential homes. <clears throat> this does not include Dove's Landing, which includes more residential homes and is located just across US 52. There are also multiple commercial lots less than a mile from the subject property, including a feed store, churches, a plumbing company, storage facilities, and gas station. As predicted by the comprehensive plan, this area is expanding at a rapid rate. Such expansion has even been celebrated by the members of the Mass County Fair Board, owner of the neighboring property. In an article published <clears throat> by the Richmond Register, Ms. Rose Anna House was quoted by stating that she was particular, particularly amazed at the number of new residential developments in the area. This statement was provided prior to the fair board breaking ground on their indoor arena. See volume 112, issue 170 of the Richmond Register. A copy of this article is attached to this comment. <clears throat> the commission's decision to unanimously approve the requested change was not arbitrary nor man, Jenny, this is a lawyer word, man. I wish you were reading this right now. Uh, capricious. Is that close? Capricious. Capricious. I was close. Sorry about that. Nor capricious. Rather, it was made in accordance with law and supported by fact. I respectfully request that the members of the Madison County Physical Court approve the relief requested herein. I am unable to form a rebuttal to any opposing written comments nor any statements received and echoed by the honorable magistrates. The best, Corey Isaacs. Um, next is from Billy Tipton. 
uh, this was sent for an iPhone. My wife and I live, live Rose Trace. We are against the zone change for quarter acre lots on old Highway 52. Uh, this next one is from Liz Jones. Good afternoon. I'm writing to voice my opposition to the proposed zone change for the property on Old Kentucky Highway 52. I chose not to express my concerns when the change was made before the Planning and Zoning Commission because, as we saw before, that step in this process is pointless. But that, but that's another discussion for another day. I am opposed to the change because I do not see the need for another subdivision close to Urban Road with two subdivisions having have recently been developed in this area. Currently, there are still houses being built in Dove's Landing subdivision, so I'm not sure what the need is for another one. An even more important reason for my opposition is the proposed appro approximately 100 houses on an area with less than 30 acres. I understand that progress or loss of green space is going to happen with the number of developers we have in our county, but there is no reason to overcrowd an area of land when we still have plenty of available space in other parts of Madison County. <clears throat> I really don't see the need for that type of development anywhere in our county. It appears to me that there are many just wanting to make a get rich quick attempt at the expense of others. When listening to planning and zoning meeting, the comment was made that there are other single family dwellings in this area, so why not have another one? If you look at Shady Oaks and Rose Trace, those houses are on at least an acre lot, providing plenty of space for people to have a yard and room to enjoy the outside. I mean, we choose to live in the country for a reason. <clears throat> Wouldn't it be awesome if our county chose to develop some subdivisions in Madison County that were well planned out and were pleasing to the eye when you drive through them? What if we demanded that these builders and developers whose only qualifications is to, is to slap a magnetic sign on their pickup truck had to be held to a higher standard than a good old boy process we've had in the past? It's time to put some thought into what our future housing looks like in Madison County. The proposal on Old Kentucky 52 is not the answer. Sincerely, Liz Jones. Next, we have Robert Mullen. Uh, I'm against the proposed zoning plan for the 28 acres for 3241, 3245, and 3249 Old Kentucky Highway 52. We need to maintain our green space here in Richmond. Everywhere you look, houses are being built on top of one another. This takes away the beauty of our existing homes that have been built to allow you to breathe and not make you feel like a herd of cattle. The traffic alone will be overbearing to the homes surrounding this area. It's all about the almighty dollar to these contractors. Nobody cares about the surrounding homeowners in the area. Robert E. Mullion, Jr. My name is Ronnie Smith, owner of property requesting zone change. We brought the property at public. We bought the property at public auction over five years ago. <clears throat> there was only one other bidder and it was not anyone from the fairground. So they must not have been interested in the property. I bought the land as an investment. I have not farmed the land at all. I only keep it mowed and looking good. This investment land for part of my retirement. It's not wrong to get the most profit out of this land. The fair board members knew when they purchased the property for fairgrounds that there was growth in Madison County and she was amazed at the number of new residential development in the area. It is on their website where it was in the Richmond Register. I was going then and the area, I, it was growing then and the area is still growing now. This property is perfect place for a subdivision, Ronnie Smith. <clears throat> uh, the next one is Noah Smallwood. Hello, I'm writing this email in regards to the zone changes in the subject line. We moved to Rose Trace about three years ago. I work in Winchester and my wife works in Lexington. We moved from Lexington to get away from the congestion of people. We decided not to move to Clark County because we didn't like the lay of the county schools downtown area or believe there was any progress in the future there. We choose Madison County strictly because of the progress. 
the future and believed in the strong leadership. We choose Rose Trace on Highway 52 because of the peace and quiet, the large lots and the lack of people. We have made many friends in the neighborhood who seem to do the same as we do and commute to their place of work to come home to peace and space. I see on the other side of 52 is a new neighborhood called Dove's Landing. This neighborhood has houses jam packed in close quarters where you can see inside your neighbor's house behind you due to lots being so small. This looks horrid. It's not attractive and seems like inner city Richmond is extending its borders outwards to places where people choose to live because of the peace and lack of people. If this reading decides to move forward with the progression of this neighborhood, I can tell you my wife and I will visit the topic of leaving Madison County. I know this doesn't bother the people voting on this hearing, but I don't feel I am alone in this consideration. We just like many others choose or chose this area because of the lack of people, traffic and large lots. If this change comes <clears throat> about, there will be a strong fluctuation in traffic on 52 Marbley Road, as well as others, along with a congestion of people. I ask that the board be re reminded that they wouldn't want the same if they chose a home base on where it was, the number of people around the area and the size of the lots. We don't want to be driven from our home. We have come to love Madison County and believe it in its leadership and the Waco area because of its rural feel and looks. We shop local and love this community. I don't feel I'm alone that if these homes are built, the topic of moving elsewhere will arise in our neighbors and friends. Thank you for your time, Noah Smallwood. Uh, I believe this is the last one. Uh, no, it's not. We have a, maybe a couple more. Um, hello, this is from Jason Brandenburg. Hello, I would like to object to the zone change for 3241, 3245, and 3249 for today's meeting's decision. Waco School, from my understanding, is already over the capacity, which teachers don't necessarily know these votes happen, but have to try and figure out once voted in. Highway 52 is already a traffic jam each day with adding this many homes will make the 52 Marbley Road intersection that much more dangerous. There's also the reality of when the D-mill stops at the depot, it's going to have a huge impact on the community. Putting the planned amount of homes on this footprint, in my opinion, is not a good decision of things considered. Thank you, Jason Brandenburg. Uh, we received a couple more here. See, I am uh, Zula Fugit at 1336 Marbley Road, uh, who sent the objection at 11.45 a.m. today, Monday the 10th, 2020. The 101 homes proposed development for 32. Is that the back page? No, it's two different, it's two different ones. Um, the 101 homes proposed development for 3241, 3245, and 3249. Thank you. Um, next is uh, the zoning changes on Mobley Road. 21, it says 2241, 3245, and 3249. Objections as a 20 year resident of Mobley Road, 28 acres with 101 projected single family residents. No water sewer congested travel difficulties potential for the three to four residential livings on less than a quarter of an acre where do grandparents and children enjoy the outside green space really 101 or 70 homes fiscal court members on 20 acres my vote no uh, is there any more is that, is that it Uh, so those magistrate fifth court members, those were all of the uh, comments, and emails that we received. Uh, obviously, you all know that if we were, you know, having able to have physical court meetings in person, that these individuals would have uh, been able to communicate in person. Um, this is the only way that we can do it by tele, telecommuting, teleconferencing our meetings. Um, do we have any questions or any further comments uh, from magistrates? Roger. 
Uh, hit your mute, Roger. Uh, hit your mute, Roger. Uh, uh, I've been out to the property three three times. Am I still there? Mm -hmm. You're good, Roger. Yeah, yeah, you're good. I hear you. Okay. Uh, I've been out to the property three times. Uh, the last two times I drove over the property. The first time I just drove by it, uh, trying to access what area it was and what part of this farm it was was going to be. But uh, after I got there this last time and pulled into where the old house used to sit, I realized that it's a beautiful spot for a few houses up front next to the road. The rest of it behind it is not much land for anything because of the, the lay of the land and how low it is and a problem with, if you had a, a retention pond, I don't know how you'd get the water to run out of it. But uh, uh, I do see that, the, uh, and one of the letters that you read uh, uh, said something about it too, that, that a few houses like baby farms or something might go good there. And, and I got to looking at the three lots that we're looking at and maybe a possibility of selling those three lots as baby farms, you know, seven to 10 acre lots, you know, uh, they'd be room for probably three, maybe four houses up front next to the road before you get into the low line land where the water is just not going to run off. You know? But that's the only way I could see that you could uh, do any good developing it at all. Uh, they may make another another lot or two out of it that would be viable i don't know but uh, uh other than that I, I don't see it any much different than the last plan that we had the issue with yeah i want to uh, appreciate your comments roger i want to uh, bert uh, if you could come back on please i, I want to get an understanding um of uh and it kind of goes along with roger's comment uh, th this is a zone change, uh, changing this to to what? Zoned agriculture right now. Mm -hmm. Request to zone it single family residential. All right. So, so no matter, so no matter if there's a hundred lots on there, or there's ten lots. Would there have to be a zone change to this zoning classification? So anything more than three lots, more than three tracks, that's considered a major subdivision mm -hmm. as far as zone change. Uh, Roger was talking about the three tracks that are already there. They're already there. They're existing. They could build houses on those today if they wanted to. They could do a minor plat and subdivide that into three tracks. Um, but in order to do more than three tracks, it requires a zone change. The density of the number of lots will be determined by the development plan and the infrastructure available and, and the, the expense that the developer wants to go to for sidewalks and curb and gutter and detention and retention. All that will be determined by whether or not he has access to sewer or not. Uh, one of your letters, uh, I think, asked uh, uh, about septic tanks on, on 60 or 70 lots, whatever it was. Uh, that won't be the case here because to do that kind of density would require access to public sewer. So that, that density um, will be determined by the developer and the infrastructure that's on the property. But, but that but that is determined at a, that's a different process than this, correct? That's the, that's the site development plan process, yes. Mm -hmm. This zone change is just to uh, assess or evaluate if this property um, is in line with the comprehensive plan um, and that the, the area is suitable for single family development. So, so there's not been any kind of site development plan established at this. So, so a lot of this, uh, these points that were made about 70 or a hundred homes, there was a, um, is that just speculation that nobody has part of the zone change process is, is uh, the owners or the applicant is required to submit a concept plan or a possibility of how this property might be laid out. Um, it by no means is a site development plan. It's by no means the, the final uh, draft or version of, of what they're going to do out there. It's just to give the, uh, the commission members a, a, you know, a, a visual of, 
of how this property might look if the zone change was granted. Uh, and that visual, was it 70 lots or 100 lots or? I don't know. Uh, it was, I think it was 60 to 70 lots proposed. 60 to 70 lots, okay. But again, it was just a, it was just a, uh, an overlay of a photograph of the property. It was no, there was no detail. There was no, it didn't show any detention or retention or any infrastructure at all. Again, okay. it's just a concept idea for the commission. Okay. Um, a lot of the comments were also uh, um, talked about quarter acre lots. Um, yeah, so so if, if, if they have access to the proper infrastructure, uh, they could get small lots like that. There could be some smaller lots, yes. Okay. I don't know if that's the developer's intention or what his plan is. I don't know if he's even going to develop it or if he's just uh, requesting a zone change to so then maybe turn around and and market the property as being more valuable because of a commercial or a, or a, a residential zoning um, because we've not got to that step yet. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, Roger, did you have something else? Did you raise your hand again? Hit your mute button. I was just going to say that, that I'd heard it was going to be around 60 lots when you all were trying to figure out okay. the number there. Because uh, I, I knew I heard some of them 90, 80 lots or whatever, and 50 the thing, or whatever. The thing you have to remember, remember Rogers, is they haven't probably done any kind of uh, site evaluation. They've not done any core drilling. They've not done any drainage calculations. They've not done any kind of uh, studies to see how the streets would be laid out. So until they do all that, it's really hard for They can come up with a general idea, but until they actually start uh, you know, investigating that process, they're not going to know how they can lay it out because they've not they've not reached that point in the process yet. Right. They're not going to spend the money to, to do all that engineering if they can't get the zone change. There's no point to, to doing that. Right. All right. Thank thank you. Thank you, Roger. Thanks, Bert. Uh, John Tudor. Yeah, you're mute. Yeah, there yeah. you go. You got there it. you go. Uh, Judge, I just want to thank all the residents in that area for their voicing their concerns to this. Uh, I just kind of disappointed that uh, these concerns weren't brought up at the planning and zoning uh, committee board rather than waiting uh, to this step that uh, it comes before fiscal court. That these concerns could have been brought up before the uh, planning and zoning and uh, maybe give them a little more insight and uh, decision before uh, it was voted on unanimously by the planning and zoning. Uh, another point or two I, I'd like to make is uh, that property is adjacent to what we voted down a year ago. It's also adjacent to the fair board out there, which is uh, agriculture or agribusiness. The, the fair is uh, would be considered uh, business, agribusiness. So there is uh, agriculture in, still in that area. And uh, Mr. Jonathan Moore, which built a new house up on Mobley Road up there with several acres, voiced his concern with the water issues and the drainage that he's having on several acres up there. So I can only imagine what it would be on, you know, a smaller track down there. Uh, some voiced their concerns about the traffic uh, problem issues that might occur. Uh, I look for most of that traffic to not go toward the uh, light at the Marbley Station, but probably go up Old 52 and come out up by the uh, entrance by the depot up there, which there is no uh, stoplight at that uh, exit up off uh, Old Marbley onto the new Marbley Road up there. So that could be a, a, you know, a traffic issue and a problem there. So, you know, uh, there's 19 comments uh, voicing concerns about it. So, uh, I just just wish some of these had been brought up before the, the planning zoning ahead of time. That's Thank all. I got you. Thank you, John. <clears throat> Tom. Hey, uh, Judge, I just want to know uh, from Bert, were, were there objections at planning and zoning? We had one objection. Um, 
And if you if you looked at your recommendation <clears throat> from the planning commission, uh, the recommendation letter, you'll see that that one uh, objection email that we got actually tended to uh, lean towards this being a proper area uh, for single family dwelling and residential. Uh, the person uh, comments were that there were subdivisions popping up all over the place out there and, and the planning commission was, was kind of of the opinion that well, there's probably a reason for that. There's a reason that, that that area is developing the way it is. We have had a couple developments in the last four or five years and, and it is a popular area right now. Um, but there's a reason for that. It's got good access to roads. It's got good infrastructure. That's the reason. Developers don't put subdivisions in areas that they can't sell houses in. They're going to put subdivisions where they can be successful and, and sell their property and sell their lots um, because they want their development to be successful. So that was the only quote unquote negative comment that we had at, at the public hearing for the planning commission. <clears throat> All right, any other, any other comments? <clears throat> we do have a motion and a second to approve um, ordinance number 2020, uh, which is approving the zone change of 3241, 3245, 3249, Old Kentucky Highway 52, Richmond, Kentucky, and authorizing the amendment of the official zoning map of Massachusetts County, Kentucky. Do we have any other discussion? All right, seeing none, call the roll. And uh, and magistrates, if you don't care, make sure you've unmuted, please. Call the roll, Clerk Barger. Master Tudor? Uh, no. Master Bakken? Yes. Master Barger? No. Judge Taylor? Yes. Yes. So, um, Counselor, this is a first in my six years of <laughs> of uh, being on the physical court. Yeah, um, mine too. Um, so I'll have to look into it real quick, but if memory serves me right, if it's not a favorable vote to pass, then it doesn't pass. But I'll have to look into that to make the official decision on whether or not the split. Okay. So uh, we can move forward and we'll come back to that in a few moments. Yes. All right. Thank you. Tom voted for it. Um, he voted. Hey, mate, make sure they make sure they muted. Or can you mute? <clears throat> mm. Okay. All right, let's see. Next is resolution 2083. This is a board of adjustments appointment. Uh, a resolution for the appointment of the Mass County Fiscal Court to the Mass County Board of Adjustments, whereas the Mass County Fiscal Court is responsible for the appointment of the Mass County Board of Adjustments members, and whereas a vacancy on the Board of Adjustments is open, and whereas the Mass County Fiscal Court has found Mike Mavity uh, as fit for the position as Board of Adjustments member. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the fiscal court does hereby approve Mike Mavity as a Mass County Board of Adjustments member. Do I have a motion and a second for resolution 2083? Roger. Uh, Roger, so moved, Kenny. John? I'll second motion 2083. Thank you all. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, call the roll, please. Master Bakken? Yes. Master Berger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Uh, next, we have resolution 2084. This is EMACSEP IPA WSMOA. And I believe, I'm. yep, there's my, our director of EMS. CSEP, Dustin Heiser. Good morning, buddy. Good morning, Judge. Good morning, everybody. Uh, yep, I'll go ahead and read the resolution. Sure. Uh, resolution to approve the memorandum of agreement between the Madison County 
Kentucky EMA CSEP and the Federal Emergency Management Agency Integrated Public Alert and Warning System, IPAWS Program Management Office. Whereas the purpose of this memorandum is to establish a management agreement between Madison County, Kentucky, EMA, CSEP, here and after referred to as the uh, Collaborative Operating Group, or COG, and the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, IPAWS program regarding the utilization and security of Madison County, EMA, CSEP's uh, interoperable system, which in our interoperate with the IPAWS open platform for emergency network, IPAWS open. And whereas the expected benefit is to enable information interoperability across emergency response organizations and systems as intended by the FEMA IPAWS program. And whereas this agreement will govern, sorry, And whereas this agreement will govern the relationship between the collaborative operating group and FEMA, including designated managerial and technical staff and system users associated with the aforementioned COG, and whereas both parties agree to allow systems interoperability through the use of a SOAP over HTTPS via the public internet, and whereas this agreement now direct or networked connection using VPN or equivalent technology between the systems named in Appendix A and IPAWS open is allowed in the event of direct connection is required and interconnected security agreement must be executed. And whereas both parties agree to maintain open lines of communication between designated staff at both the managerial and technical levels, and whereas agreement will remain in effect based on the life of the authority of operate, authority to operate, sorry, ATO, and IPAWS open for a maximum of three years after the last date on either signature, upon expiration of the IPAWS open ATO, and, or after three years, whichever comes first, this agreement will expire without further action, and this system uh, access privileges will be revoked. Now, there, now, therefore, it be resolved that the fiscal court does hereby approve to enter into this agreement and authorize the judge executive to execute the same on behalf of the court. I think you're on mute, Judge. Thank you, brother. Yep. Uh, do we have a motion and second to approve Resolution 2084? <clears throat> John Tudor. Judge, I'd like to make a motion to approve Resolution 2084. Thank you, Tom Bakken. Second on that, Judge. I have a motion and a second. Um, do we have any questions or any so, comments? But if you don't mind, Judge, I'll give you give a little bit of background of what this is. I think that will help. Um, so this system is a system. It's called IPAWS or Integrated a Public Alert and Warning System. It basically allows us to take multiple alerting platforms and put them under one activation system. Um, we have done some of this. Uh, we currently do this with our EAS or emergency alert system. So if you get a, if you see the alert that comes across the TV or uh, if you're listening to radio in your car and it cuts out for whether that's weather or other events, um, those are, that's an EAS alert, emergency alert system. We also have the ability here to do wireless emergency alerts, and that's the alert to the uh, cell phone. So we utilize those for golden alerts and missing persons, um, as we just did the other day. So those alerts, uh, or this system and this integration and this memorandum of agreement uh, with FEMA allows us to operate on that system. And we put, we have our, our training in place, we have our uh, security uh, efforts in place, both with our training and our 911 security that we have to take every year or every two years, plus the security that fiscal court uh, through uh, HR and Chris's office uh, puts in place. So we have, we've been utilizing this system for uh, probably four years, three, four years now. Um, and this is just an update to the MOU. We basically have come across the three years 
on the previous signed agreement and it's time to to re-up it so um, that's where we're at and i'll take any questions if anybody has them. i think tom did so yeah tom go ahead just want to make a comment judge i had some concerns about the um wording that's in the attachment on that and requirements that um uh, that we're um, responsible for to perform and security um procedures that you're also supposed to perform and after talking with uh, dustin and and uh, chris i feel comfortable that we're meeting all of those uh, steps thank you thank you tom any other discussion all right, seeing none, then we'll call her roll. Clark Barger. Master Barger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bakken? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Judge, I just, one more comment to that. Um, you know, this system is a huge asset to us, CSEP, non CSEP. Um, I will tell you that we have utilized this system a number of times in the probably last two and a half, three years. Um, in some situations, I know of four off the top of my head, we've had people go missing um, and we've sent out the alert. People see this on their cell phones and within 30 minutes, we have somebody has called dispatch 911 and said, I, I just saw this person in another town. I just saw this person behind my house. Um, they're walking through a field. Um, this person's at a another location and what that allows us to do is one we if you know if it is somebody that's lost and they're truly lost we quickly can get somebody over there to identify them locate them and get them home safe if they're already in another location and they're safe it allows us to not expend resources and taxpayers dollars trying to identify or locate this individual it it, it helps us tremendously uh, to make those decisions quicker. Now, it's not always that we find them right away, uh, but I know of in the last two years, four situations that this has been a huge help uh, and made that a lot quicker. So I just wanted to add that. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Dustin. Appreciate it. Um, next, we have Resolution 2085. This is the Stony Run Road FD39 Funds MOA. Um, I'll read the resolution and then we'll have some discussion um, to give you all a little bit of back, back story. Resolution 2085, a resolution adopting and approving the execution of an agreement between the Commonwealth of Kentucky Transportation Cabinet Department of Highways in Madison County. Whereas this agreement entered into by and between the Commonwealth of Kentucky Transportation Cabinet Department of Highways here in after referred to as department and Madison County here and after referred to as local public agency or LPA. And whereas the parties here to desire to repair a slide on Stony Run Road in Madison County, which shall here and after be referred to as the project. And whereas the LPA desires to be the lead agency and perform this project to enhance the safety and reliability of roadway connections for the commuting public. And whereas the LPA shall refer to the applicable state requirements listed in the project development guide for local public agencies and any future revisions for assistance in complying with this agreement. And whereas the LPA has asked the department for funding assistance for costs incurred during this project. And whereas the department agrees this is a worthwhile pro project and is willing to reimburse the LPA up to 167,546 in state contingency funding FD39 for the completion of this project. And whereas any costs in excess of the reimbursement funding of $167,546 for this project will be the responsibility of the LPA. <laughs> and whereas the effective date of this agreement is the date of signature by the Secretary of the Transportation Cabinet. Now therefore be it resolved, this resolution is hereby approved and the county judge executive is hereby authorized to execute same on behalf of the fiscal court. Um, I do want to give a little bit of backstory uh, to the fiscal court members, magistrates. We we had requested some discretionary funding back last July, uh, and uh, we had asked for some blacktop, but uh, transportation cabinet at the time did not feel like that uh, we had roads in bad enough shape that uh, needed to be. Um, uh, uh, approved yet and so they asked us to send in some some projects that maybe were um, in a little bit more disrepair so 
we sent in several slides uh, and we got a letter um, um, from uh, Bobby Joe, our commissioner, uh, and um, Se Secretary Gray and our governor, Andy Bashir had approved um, some, some discretionary uh, money for this Stony Run project. We did send in two different Stony Run projects. Uh, one of them was a, a little bigger project. Uh, and uh, Willie is probably, yeah, Willie's on here. He can explain the project to us a little better than I can. Um, but we did get the a project that we'd estimated at 167546 So I'm very thankful for Secretary Gray and our governor um, for uh, approving um, that that fix on that roadway. Um, I do I do want to make um, this um, agreement with the transportation cabinet is a draft. Um, we did put it in draft format because uh, when they sent the agreement, um, the first sentence in it was whereas the parties here to desire to resurface Stony Run Road. Um, and they're actually in the process of changing that to the right verbiage to say that we're fixing a slide repair, that it's not just resurfacing. Um, so we we have uh, we are making that change, but I wanted to be able to go ahead and get this approved in court, um, and that's why if you all notice the resolution says slide repair, but the uh, actual agreement does not. But once it gets sent to us this way, it'll allow me to be able to go ahead and sign it and us get working on that on that project. So Willie, I don't know if you want to explain the I don't know if you want to explain the this slide repair. Um, it looked like that, um, well, I'll just let you explain it. Okay. This was, uh, we had two uh, sites on uh, Stony Run Road. This was actually the larger site and uh, it's such a, uh, the, the, where it is, it's such a repair that we could make in house with, uh, with the baskets and such that we use. So this will actually be uh, contracted out to Hinkle Environmental Services. That's the or, rail and cribbing, like we've been doing? Dr drilling and putting in the railroad, the railing and cribbing. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's by the creek, and the creek has undermined the road, actually, is what the repair is. Okay. It's three 315 foot long repair. Okay. Sounds good. So at this time, do I have a motion um, to approve resolution 2085 as presented, please? John? Judge, I'd like to make a motion to approve a resolution 2085, the repair of the Stony Run uh, slide project. Thank you, John. Do I have a second? Tom? Second on that, Judge. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Tom? Well, I just have a question. This um, project, it will be bid out, correct? The slide repair will be bid. Um, uh, I'll have to let Willie. I don't. I don't know that's the case. Cause, is there other people that do uh, rail and cribbing? Uh, judge, in the past, we have not found anyone else that can do this type of repair. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they allow us to do this without the bid process. Yeah, and and Tom, we get those quotes. You know, when we when we ask for discretionary funds. You know, we have to get quotes and we have to send in all the paperwork uh, to the state as far as, and it's part of the approval process. Okay, I just want to make sure I know that Hinkle does most of that work for us and is doing ongoing projects right now. Just want to make sure about the big Yeah. Any other, any other, John? Uh, Judge, uh, I'm sure Willie's looked at the project and Hinkle's done work like that for us before. And so he knows the ballpark figure, what it's going to cost. And I, I don't think they're over charges on the, the work they're doing. That's all I got. Thanks, John. Um, well, I'm struggling here, Colleen. I'm sorry. There you go. Thank you. So I just got the, uh, the agreement. Uh, they just brought it in. Uh, so I got the agreement from the transportation ca cabinet uh, and it has the right verbiage. So, so it's good timing. Uh, any other comments on resolution 2085? All right, seeing none, call the roll, please. Mr. Tudor. 
Mr. Bakken? Yes. Mr. Berger? Yes. Ms. Taylor? Yes. All right, thanks everyone. Uh, Chief, hold on just a second. We're gonna back up uh, our counselors back. Uh, I think uh, has uh, some updates for us on uh, our ordinance number 2020 with a tied uh, two to two uh, approval of that zone change. Yes, thanks judge. Um, so memory didn't completely fail me. Normally in an ordinance under 67078, a majority of fiscal court is required to pass the ordinance. However, thanks to um, Bert's help, because it wasn't me, <laughs> we were able to do some quick research and he knew somewhere there was an exception for planning and zoning and he was correct. Pursuant to KRS 100.211, for the fiscal court to overrule the recommendation of planning and zoning, the, they have to have voted to override it by a majority of fiscal court. So since that didn't happen, planning and zoning's recommendation and the ordinance of the fiscal court is deemed to have passed by operation of law. Okay. All right. Judge, I'll just add to that. that that's in our regulation as well. Obviously, uh, comes from straight from the KRS, but our local land use regulations um, say the same thing. Okay. So that, uh, so then the ordinance 20, the ordinance 2020 passed. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, next we have uh, resolution 2086. That's uh, the fire department rescue boat bid award. Hey chief. Good yes, morning. sir. Good morning. If you want to read the resolution, that'd be great. Okay. A resolution approving the bid award to Tri-County Marine for a fire department rescue boat. Whereas the Madison County Physical Court is required to approve of all bids in accordance with the administrative code. And whereas the bids were for the purchase of a fire department rescue boat. And whereas the boat will be used for water rescue and searches on the river and lakes in the county. And whereas the bids were properly posted, have been opened and reviewed. Whereas the Mass County Fire Department received three bids, which have been reviewed and have come to agreement to award the bid to Tri County Marine. And now, therefore, it be resolved that the physical court does hereby approve the resolution that the county judge executive is hereby authorized to exactly the same on behalf of the physical court. Thank you, uh, Chief. Uh, do we have a motion and a second to approve resolution 2086? Roger. Uh, Roger, uh, hit your mute button. Sorry about that. It's all right. Um, I also wanted to mention that the Valley View Ferry, we have two rescue boats that's on the ferry, so those are welcome to be used by the county anytime they need them too. But uh, I make a motion for the uh, to uh, purchase the rescue boat. All right. So we have a motion to approve resolution 2086. Do we have a second? Tom? Take that, Judge. So we have a motion and a second. Do we have any further discussion? Uh, Chief, do you want to tell us uh, how much? <coughs> uh, the bid we went with was $18,303.77. Okay. And we had that in the rescue line item for this year also. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, call the roll, please. Mr. Bakken? Yes. Mr. Berger? Yes. Mr. Tudor? Yes. Mr. Tudor? Yes. yes. Thank you all. Thank you. Um, next, this is where we're going to do resolution 2087. Uh, this is where we amended the agenda. Uh, a resolution to approve Madison County Fiscal Court funding for Sheriff's Department de-escalation training. Whereas the Madison County Fiscal Court desires to fund the Sheriff's Department de-escalation training, and whereas today's increased service demands and the scrutiny placed upon public safety professionals have resulted in a growing need to master 
verbal conflict management skills. And whereas the Mass County Sheriff's Department is looking for training to assist their deputies in dealing with difficult situations. And whereas verbal de-escalation training provides public safety professionals with time-tested communication skills proven to help de-escalate uh, volatile situations, safeguard fellow officers, emotional and professional well-being, and significantly enhance the agent, agency's professional image. And whereas the training would consist of seven hour online course for all the agency provided by Dolan Consulting Group at a discounted price of $2,450. And now therefore be it resolved that the Mass County Fiscal Court does hereby approve this resolution. <clears throat> Do I have a motion and a second to approve uh, resolution 2087? John? I can make a motion to approve Resolution 2087, Judge. Uh, ro uh, Roger. So Roger seconded, Kenny. So we have a motion by John, uh, seconded by Roger. Uh, just to give you all uh, just a little bit of backstory here as well, uh, the sheriff had just sent me a letter uh, addressed to me and the members of the fiscal court uh, requesting this funding. Um, and so we thought it was appropriate to bring it um, to court uh, and have it approved in a resolution. Uh, we value their service to our community and we value their relationship. And so uh, I thought it was appropriate um, to uh, to do it this way. Um, do we have any comments or, or questions? John? Judge, I think anytime we can de-escalate a situation and talk someone out of doing something harmful to themselves or to the public, rather than having to take uh, force for action you know, it, it has to be better than the outcome in the, in the other situations. Uh, $2,400, I think, uh, you know, that's well money well spent for even one situation uh, not to get out of hand. So I, I, I'm very much support the sheriff's department and what they're doing. Yeah, I agree. And that, this will this actually will be for every one of his officers, Sheriff. Yes. It, it's like 40 or something. Is that? Yeah. So, Tom? Hey, uh, Judge, I just want to commend the sheriff for uh, seeking and finding this type of additional training for his people. You know, his uh, deputies are put in tough situations every single day. And uh, not that they're not trained now, but any additional that you can get uh, to de-escalate situations has got to be a good thing. And so I just commend the sheriff for seeking out that training. Yeah, agree. Anything else? All right, seeing none, call the roll, please. Mr. Berger? Yes. Mr. Tudor? Yes. Mr. Bucking? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you, guys. Thank you all. Uh, next, we have uh, some personnel in our road department. We have our road department administrator, Scott Shepard, on with us. Hi, Scott. Good, Good morning, morning, buddy. Good. Good morning. Uh, we have a couple of positions that has come open due to a uh, senior member of our staff retiring. Uh, the first promotion I'd like to ask for is for Ricky Foster. He is currently a light-duty mechanic. I uh, would like to move him to a medium-duty mechanic. Uh, current salary of seventeen forty-five. His proposed salary will be twenty dollars per hour, and that will take effect on eight nineteen twenty twenty. Um, do I have a motion and a second for the promotion of Ricky Foster to a new position? Uh, uh, Roger. So move. So we have a motion, uh, John Tudor. Second that motion, Judge. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Tom Bakken. I just have a question, Scott. Is his pay based on um, his longevity um, with the uh, county simply because the uh, the salary for a uh, medium duty mechanic is twenty three thirty five in the next or uh, the current salary? Yeah, it's it's based on his time with the county and by our classification chart. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Good question. Thanks, Scott. Any other questions or any other discussion? Seeing none, call the roll, please. Mr. Tudor? Yes. Mr. Bakken? Yes. 
Mr. Berger? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. All right, next, Scott. Uh, the next person we would like to promote will be Daryl Paw. Uh, he is currently a medium duty mechanic. We would like to change him to a heavy duty mechanic position. Current salary twenty three thirty five. His proposed salary will be twenty five dollars, and that will become effective on eight nineteen twenty twenty. All right, thank you, John. Would you like to make a motion to uh, promote? Daryl Poth to heavy duty mechanic uh, from medium duty mechanic. Thank you, John. Do I have a second? Tom? Second that, Judge. So I have a motion and a second to hire Daryl Poth, uh, or I'm sorry, to promote Daryl Poth from medium duty mechanic to heavy duty mechanic. All right. Any other discussion? John? Judge, both these gentlemen that have been with the road department several years and do a wonderful job down there. Uh, I'm in there uh, every once in a while, and, and they're both working hard to try to uh, improve our equipment down there at the road department, and uh, they're top duty mechanics, and, and be hard to replace either one of them. So I'm, I'm for promoting these guys. Thank you, John. Any other discussion? Seeing none, call the roll, please. Master Botkin? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Tudor? Yes. Let's do it. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Scott. Uh, next is judges report. I just have a few announcements here this morning. Uh, Bria's annual Celtic Festival is Friday, August 14th through Sunday, August 16th uh, at various locations throughout Berea. Visit the Berea Celtic Festival's website for more information. Uh, the Berea Chamber of Commerce annual Spoonbread Festival has been canceled for 2020. Uh, they are already looking for 2021 to be a bigger and, and better year. Uh, if you haven't filled out your U.S. Census forms, please do so soon. Uh, you know, I know with the, our current situation with the pandemic, you know, some of these things, uh, you know, we lose sight of, we, they, they get through our memory. Um, but this census is still very, very, very important. Um, it is winding down and we need to get our numbers up to be uh, as as close to accurate as possible. And the only way to do that is for people to fill out their census. Uh, the U.S. Census website is very easy to navigate and it takes about 10 minutes. I mean, it doesn't take just a few minutes to uh, to go on there and register. So please do so. And if you have already done uh, and registered, uh, encourage your coworkers and your family members and your friends to do the same. Um, just ask them, Hey, have you filled out your census form? Because it really, really is important for us over the next 10 years financially for our county and our school systems and our community. So uh, one unforeseen consequence of this pandemic is a drastic shortage, a drastic shortage of blood. The Kentucky Blood Center has several mobile blood drives in Madison County each month. Uh, visit the Kentucky Blood Center's website to find a blood drive um, near you and to help relieve this, this shortage. Remember to wear your mask when you're out in public, wash your hands often, often uh, and always remember to do to social distance. Uh, the things, um, these things will get us through this faster. Um, so, so please, uh, just please be mindful of others. Uh, and then our county courthouse, I know it's about a month off, but uh, we will be closed. Mass County Courthouse and its related offices will be closed on Monday, September the 7th uh, for the Labor Day holiday. Uh, and our offices will reopen on Tuesday, September the 8th at 8 a.m. Uh, next, we have comments from magistrates. Tom? Yeah, just, I just got a few things today. Um, <clears throat> about a week ago, they had a, a very successful Back the Blue um, uh, march over in Bria. And um, I want to thank the Sheriff Cole for providing some deputies and some resources over there for that. And um, the um, and I also would just want to thank our citizens there that that turned up in Bria to support our law enforcement with all the negative things going on. You know, our law enforcement officers they go out every day and put their life on the line for us um, in the performance of their duties, and we certainly appreciate them and thank them for that. And uh, also just want to say that this Friday uh, from 11 to 2 that the Coyote Station. Uh, over in Richmond is going to be having an event there for our law enforcement officers and 
you know, the parking lot's probably going to be pretty full, and I doubt you may be able to get in there. But you can drive, at least drive by and honk the horn at them. They'd appreciate that. So uh, we've uh, got some work going on over on our buckle right now. Uh, Willie sent me a picture yesterday. I drove down there Sunday, and uh, nothing had happened since the last time we were over there, since our last court. But they were down there yesterday working away. So um, just be uh, be leery of that, and you'll have to go around that till they get that finished, obviously. The... Um, uh, they're supposed to be going down to Wheeler Branch next um, to finish up that project down there. I drove down there the other day, and the county's part with the baskets. We've done a good job down there and a lot of work, but, uh, you know, they all Hinkle will go down there and finish that up as soon as they finish. And then the uh, bridge replacement out on Bogey Mill, is, uh, it's behind. So, uh, you know, it's uh, maybe a week or so behind on that project before it gets it finished. And um, I also wanted to just make one last comment and then, and just to follow up with you, Judge, on the uh, census workers, um, you know, with it, things winding down, they are now going uh, door to door if you hadn't filled out that census. Well, I fell in a gap to where that I was in one residence when I did my online census, but yet the new residents hadn't uh, shown up on the count. So there was an actual worker that came by and he had all the the uh, proper credentials uh, for that, you know, you're giving them a lot of personal information there, but he had all the proper con uh, credentials for that. And it was a very young and polite, uh, I mean, a very polite, uh, knowledgeable uh, young man that asked a few questions and was on his way. It didn't take five minutes. So uh, just be aware of those folks that they may, you may see one of them on your door. He did have a mask on and was performing the social distancing and all of that as well. So thank you. That's all good. Thanks, Tom. Uh, do you want to end with your normal ending? Yes, sir. If you need anything, you can reach me at 200-9765. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Uh, let's see, John. Yeah, Judge. Uh, i just like to first say that the decision of opening uh, Mass County Schools is still in limbo. We, they haven't made a decision yet. And I just ask that everybody pray with their decision and be supportive of uh, Superintendent David Gillum. Uh, they're doing a great job. I'm getting a low battery here, I'm about to lose you. But uh, I, I ask that everybody support the reopening of schools. I think it's so important that we go back and get into school. Uh, also, we got the approval of, uh, can you still hear me? Yeah, I've got you, you're good. Okay. Well, okay. Uh, we got the approval of the Stony Run Fund uh, project there. And that will be under construction in the next couple of weeks with Hinkle Construction. Uh, thank Willie and, and thank you for working through that and, and getting the funding for it, Judge. Appreciate that. Uh, the uh, Griggs Road, I was out there after we did some ditching out there. And uh, I don't know whether it hadn't had time to work or not, but. Uh, the blacktop on the surface is still shifting a little bit. So that's something we're going to have to keep an eye on and see if we've made any progress out there on Griggs Road. I got a couple of calls uh, last week to uh, maybe go down and clean the boat ramp off. And I drove down there uh, last week and looked at it myself. And uh, it wasn't severe enough that uh, we need to take a greater backhoe down there to clean it. We didn't have to drive all the way 25 miles out to the boat ramp. So uh, I worked with the Waco Volunteer Fire Department. They took a tanker truck down there and washed the ramp off and, and got it in good shape. And it's safe for everybody to launch their boat down there at Waco or at the uh, College Hill boat ramp. Uh, the mowing <coughs> on state roads, I've had several calls on that. I've talked with Brandon. Uh, the, it's contracted out. The contract crew that does the mowing are running a little bit behind. I think they're doing a great job. I uh, got a call on College Hill Road, and the next day they were down there mowing and uh, got s several uh, compliments on, on how well they did down there on College Hill. I just want to thank Brandon for that and his hard work for the state and working with the county and what he does. Judge, that's all I got. Uh, everybody be careful and be safe out there. Wear your mask and, and do whatever you're uh, asked to do so we can get these schools back open. Thank you. Thank you, John.
Raj. Uh, I was going to give a little bit of a report on the uh, bridge down there on Bogey Mill, but Tom beat me to it, so he gives the report on that. Uh, but the only other thing I got is uh, been noticing that uh, down at the uh, truck stop exit uh, 95, uh, seemed like they've been uh, moving the traffic through there pretty good, even though it's a, it's a big project. Uh, they're handling the traffic real well. I've gone through there a few times and not been stalled very long at all, you know, to, to get through. And most time it's it's just regularly flowing. That's about all I got, but I just wanted to thank uh, all the workers that we got. And appreciate your help. Thanks, Roger. Uh, Counselor, do you have anything you need to add today? No. You good? Kenny? No. Sheriff, sure. you good? All right. Uh, we had no uh, uh, Facebook comments. Uh, we had no questions or anything on Facebook, so make that announcement. Um, I need a motion and a second to pay the claims and approve the transfers. Raj? So move. John? I second that, Judge. Any discussion? Seeing none, call the roll, please. Mr. Berger? Yes. Mr. Tudor? Yes. Mr. Bucket? Yes. Let's do it. Yes, uh, Clark Barger. I will say that uh, your uh, that your voice sounds a lot better uh, today than it has been in the past. Yes, our superb IT department has supplied me with truckloads of internet over here. <laughs> truckloads. He's going so fast. He's in the future. <laughs> Should I call you McFly? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next court meeting is August twenty fifth, twenty twenty. Again, that will uh, be right back here on Zoom. That'll be August 25th, 2020. I need a motion to second to adjourn. Rog? Make a motion to adjourn. Tom? Second, Judge. I have a motion to second. Call the roll, please. Master Tudor? Yes. Master Bakken? Yes. Master Burger? Yes. Ms. Taylor? Yes. Uh, thanks, everyone. It's great to see you all. God bless you. Have a good week. Bye-bye. Thank you.